Get the dang curtains, dorky. Open them up. What do I pay you for? You done, jobber? You don't pay me. Nurse Misery. Yes. This show has gone very well. However, you have promised me, promised me to reincarnate the souls of these lost gentlemen from Alcatraz. I've been practicing. And yes, we have not seen any volunteers step up. So you need to go to the back and get one. <laughs> so, oh, this one looks good. Why am I in this this getup? Just like new gear for the thing. You'll like it. Yeah, it's awesome. It's a great getup. You just sit right down here. We'll give the mic over to her. Yeah. Fresh. Put the mic down, dummy. He and hold him. Clowns don't take directions well. What? Hold him. He's not get up. <laughs> what are you doing? Breaking the couch. But hold him. Yeah. Stop, stop breaking everything and destroying things. We need him alive. So he can Hurry up and get it done! Alright. Through the graces oh. of the goddess, we ask that Frank and Bonnie and Stanley Dan and ah, Stanley Dan spirit will be called to me. That's a little bit more violent than I expected it. Oh. I'm gonna get killed by Dorothy oh. over here. Oh. Oh, I I believe this is his. Oh, here you go. Did it work? Did it work? Who are you? That's a clown. His name is Dorky. And that's a chuckle. And you have Dorky hair on you. That's kind of gross. Welcome. Welcome, Frank. Hi. Where, where am I? Welcome back to the land of the living. You're at... The Chuckles and Laugh Show, Insane Asylum. 
Gardnerville Insane Asylum, to be precise. Yes. How was your swim, Frank? <laughs> kind of, kind of quick. Uh, chili? <laughs> it did it. Welcome back. You know, it seems like you're free at last, only it cost you a very, very sincere thing. Just Yeah, my life. Freedom is never free. And you found that out the hard way, my friend. Yes, I did. When I read that article about you escaping from Alcatraz back in the 1960s, I was very, very impressed with this. However, I did not think it was possible for a man to escape, seeing how those waters are so frigid, and the distance between land and the other piece of land is too much for the human to paddle. Well, I got out of all those other prisons, so this was no challenge to me. <laughs> It seemed to be a challenge because it took your life, Frank. At I, least he tried. I did get out. I may have died, but I did get How out. How do you like your new body, Frank? It's young. I can try to keep a little on the good side here. I like it. And uh, you might be able to keep Deadly Dan's body. <laughs> I did it right. We're going to go to a commercial break. And then we're going to bring out another willing sucker. Frank, to the back over there is plenty of coffee and whiskey. Yeah. At your disposal. Oh, okay. There are some women back there. Oh, really? Women? Where? Lots of women. Oh. Go back they the won't like you, room. Chuckles. That's not a woman! That was wonderful. I did it. It worked. It worked. You brought him back. I that told you I've been practicing. We don't make such a bad team, although you should have been holding him down a little stronger so I didn't get kicked into a headstone. It was zero effort put in on his part. I'm sorry. I thought you were tough. My mistake. <laughs> you are you here for a muscle. Anyways, Even though you're a dork. There, is there... There's more. There's more. There's more back there. Again? Is there anybody else back there? Yeah. I have Johnny back there. Hey! John Almeida! Maniac Mike, what you got here? What are you here? Take a seat, Johnny. John Almeida has volunteered. Right there. Right here? To right be part of your experiment. Yes. Oh, yeah. You've volunteered. You have been volunteered. <laughs> you hold that. What's going on? And we're going to hold you Just here. Just relax. Hold stop! Oh, <laughs> what are you doing? Stop! Are you sure you got him? We got him. We got him. He ain't moving. All right. He's kind of like a dead chicken. Crime is a heart. <laughs> Why? I, I don't know this is just been. so entertaining to watch. Why am I going to bother? <laughs> All right. Okay. Boy, Almeida's not even putting up a fight here. I know, it's no great. struggle. I, it's just kind of well, sad. Well, you just do it. This hand stinks. <laughs> I don't know where it's been. All right. All right. Come on, come on. <laughs> okay. So bad. Uh, uh, he's back. You can unchoke you can, him. You can unchoke him and, and stop mounting him. Not Johnny Almeida. Now it's John. The, the other John. 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 Come on up. Yeah. Johnny. He's gonna be very confused when he looks in a mirror. Welcome back to the land of the living, Johnny. What happened? So you, That's not Johnny. You you died, John. You fell over the boat. I fell over the boat. Then. You were always, you weren't the brighter of the three, were you, John? No, I wasn't there. Yeah. No. Maybe if you paddled, the boat may have made it, huh? Yeah, maybe so there. John, welcome back to the living. How's it feel? Feels good. What was it like being back there in Alcatraz, John? Oh, it was bad. You got everything you deserved, man. Everything you deserved. Everything I you you want to take this man talking from. to you like that, No, John. I didn't deserve everything, man. Well, John. I think it's gonna tag like a couple. Welcome of to the things. Chuckles and Laughs show, John. Take the sledgehammer yep. and murder him. Yeah. 
kill him now. It's okay, really. It I'll is. Just do one next. Oh, <laughs> keep going, John. Both hands. Yeah, both hands. Both hands into that. Come on. Come on. Come on. Put some effort into it. <laughs> That's what you get. John, John, John. You can slow down now, John, okay. John, John, John. He is. He is hurting John. John. Uh, I think. Great job, John. Give me back my hammer. Well, Watch John, that hammer, right. dorky. John. You're gonna get me in the face. We're gonna tell you like we told Frank. It's okay. Although there was no women back there, and the beer was something that Y2 Ray urinated inside of. <laughs> I never said it was good beer. Frank is gonna be very upset <laughs> that's once okay. he finds out that that's pee. Frank will get over it. There was no beer at all. No, no, there was not. There was no. bumpkin soda though. I don't drink that stuff. Go to the back where there's a lot of illegal gambling <laughs> and. Lots of other stuff that you enjoy. Maybe there's yeah. somebody back there you can pilfer. We'll see in a little bit. Just don't hide all the mirrors, because he's not going to recognize himself. Okay. See you later. Chuckles and Laugh Show, and we have a very special guest coming on. Uh, one of the uh, members that went overboard on the raft trying to escape Alcatraz. Uh, very easy, Mr. John. That's right. Well, let's hear it for John William Anglin. Yeah. He doesn't look too happy. Who would be? Come on over, John. Surfing music, that's gotta be what makes you mad because the last thing you saw were the white caps of those waves as they took you over into the ocean and forever drowned you. So, how does shark taste you? No, it didn't taste too good actually. So, what got into your head to actually escape with these gentlemen? I mean, first of all, they're bank robbers that didn't succeed because they got arrested. So, what would make you think, and the other gentlemen escaped jail? Countless times you got caught. So why in God's green earth would you accept the fact of trying to escape Alcatraz, which at that point in time was considered impossible? Well, we wanted to try. We could we could tired of being in there for so long. You just you just wanted to get out of there. I can understand that, but you you took your life into your hands. I mean. Yes, I did. We were very dear. We says, "Hey guys, we got to get out of here." So we found like a way to escape there. So, who did most of the work? Now, you guys are out there rowing in the middle of the ocean. Um, obviously, someone's hands had to get loose because, uh, you know, you didn't make it. And here you are, reincarnated in John Almeida's body, which we're very sorry we could not find another body to reincarnate you in. Good help is hard to find. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes, it is. So, well, who, who did most of the work? Well, actually, the other guy, the other guy said, like, a lot of the work. I just went along with the plan there. So you might have been the one that caused the boat to capsize. Yes, I did. Wow. I, I bet you once Frank hears that, he's going to be very, very upset that you were the one that caused that. As we all know, uh, we couldn't get a hold of Clarence. You know, uh, we couldn't channel his energy into here to have him uh, try to come back with us. For reason, so Clarence might actually be still alive. Uh, yeah, you yeah. never know. We was looking, we was looking for the Clarence. We don't, we don't know what happened to Clarence. So you're <laughs> saying that he might have actually let you guys out of there, and yes. someone might have picked him up. Yeah, they, they could have been. Yeah, I did hear speculation that Clarence actually is in Ireland. Um, he escaped the country and gone to Ireland. Yeah, he could have been. Yeah, yeah, so you're not, you're not sure. Um, all of a sudden, you come back to life, and here you are, sitting next to this ugly excuse for an evil clown. It has a majestically beautiful, handsome clown beast. Uh, I like that hat of yours. He just makes you want to escape again, man. <laughs> yeah. I makes you want to go back to Alcatraz. <laughs> well, you can go back to Alcatraz, as a matter of fact, and you can visit it. You can visit your cell over and over again and have nightmares. <laughs> yes. So... What was being in Alcatraz like? I mean, you said it was horrible. Um, what were the conditions of that? I mean, today's modern prisons, by any standards, cannot compare to the pain and cruelty that the men of Alcatraz 
succumb to. What was it like? Oh, it's just a nigga prison. It's tough. You have to do what they say. You can't eat what you want. You have no freedom. You're locked up like 23, 4, 24 hours a day, and it's tough. That's most modern prison. So what makes yeah. it so hard? It's just like so hard. You have to do what they say, and they don't treat people right and things like that. Most modern prisons. You don't treat people right. <laughs> sounds like prison. Yeah, yeah that yeah. sounds like prison. Yeah. But maybe, maybe if you didn't rob a bank, well, maybe if you robbed a bank and you were successful, you don't see too many pretty girls in there either. When you're locked up, you're locked up. Well, that's why it's called jail. And that's <laughs> Let me ask you a question. How many times were you the pretty girl? <laughs> yes. Oh, I just stayed, stayed away. They tried, to, they tried to chase me, but I just they got away. So I tried to run away. Who was it that finally taught you the finer, intimate social graces of prison life? <laughs> it was the other guys, actually. So you're laying that all down on Frank. Yeah, I'm laying it all down on Frank. So what did you think when Frank came up to you with this idea of escaping from jail and uh, setting up the raft and everything? You actually thought it was possible? Yeah, yeah, we, we had a plan. We escaped from prison. I told him, so yeah, we can't take this anymore. We gotta go. We, yeah. we just get tired of it. No, well, I, I hear you. And uh, thanks for being on the show. And we're gonna go back to you. We're gonna have some great time. You can hang out and film with us and yeah. harass people. Sounds good. Um, as a matter of fact, there's a guy named Y2 Ray. If you can get the number on him, I mean, like, the number on him, not get his number, <laughs> get the number on him, I will pay you. Oh, yeah. Yes, I will pay you. If you can just, you know. He was one of the prison guys when I was at Alcatraz, Y2 Ray. That, that, is, that is a lie. Y2 Ray is not that old. <laughs> he was not a prison guard at Alcatraz. You've been into the whiskey too much in the back. Maybe get off. been dead too long. Get off my stage, Get out of here. Okay, I gotta go. You smell like rags. <laughs> you could be a politician. <laughs> Boy. We're gonna go to a commercial break. Original makers of Bum Kiss Soda, new diet, Bum Kiss Soda. That's right, two wonderful flavors, both made with guaranteed 100% spider venom. I taste test it, but it's cigarette butt flavor. I don't like cigarettes. Don't smoke at home, kids. Smoke someone else's. The moment we've all been waiting for, the main attraction of the paranormal reaction. <laughs> That's right, Greg Bess from Oracle Paranormal, all the way from Connecticut, has come out here to entertain each and every one of you and hopefully send a shiver or thrill down your spine. Either way, let's hear a good well armed welcome for Greg Bess from Oracle Paranormal. Yeah! Welcome, Greg! How's it going, guys? <laughs> well, good to see you. Great. <laughs> Finally, I got some real talent next to me instead of this jobber dorky. That mic's right there, it's all yours. You can take it right out of the stand right there and hold it like uh, you've never held a mic before. Oh, wait a minute, this is PG 13, we can't do that. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Greg Best. Thanks, great to be here, man. This is a great honor. Of course, you run a cable access show as well in Rhode Island, Connecticut. This is the part where we let you do selfish, shameless promotion. Hey, it's Oracle Paranormal. We, we, uh, we got a TV show on Rhode Island and Connecticut. Um, not sure the times or nothing like that. You have to check the site. Um, we can throw up a little commercial if your time's on it to give you a little promo. We definitely can. Cool. Cool. Appreciate it. So, Greg, you've been into the paranormal research for how long? About, it's going on 11 years now. 11 years, that's a long time to be in oh, this yeah. business. Uh, a lot of people either fade out or uh, go on to different and better things. Yeah, it goes, it goes in and out. I mean, you know, 
you get members that are gung ho and then and they bail on you and you gotta keep rolling on with it. And uh, you know, I've had events in my life that um, have changed my life, and that's why I do what I do. I want to know where where we go when we when we pass on and why we can come back and who can come back. And I got a lot of questions. I got a lot of questions too, and the big man upstairs not answering. Darn you! <laughs> Darn you! So how many clowns do you have on your show? None yet. I'm sure we're going to though. I'm more than willing to send you in, just as long as you push him in the river, that big river. Speaking about which, um, I heard you talking when you came in here. Now, I would never have thought this, because I've done everything from illegally discharging fire weapons, dumping people in the river, fishing, but I would never have thought of ghost hunting in that area, in the big river. Um, you, you did an investigation of one of the buildings around there? Yeah, we did uh, actually three. Every year we do, we do a live Halloween broadcast from uh, Mox Big River Inn, and uh, everyone has been eventful, and uh, so we got the most uh, incredible evidence that we've received yet from that place. Um, I actually uh, had a, uh, an occurrence where I jumped over my monopod. That, that's pretty. So it actually it intimidated you enough to move you, scared oh, yeah. you otherwise. Yeah, the first time I ever heard an audible vocalization, a woman spoke, and uh, then she came around the back and came through the dark. I mean, you know, when you see us on TV, you can see everything because we film with infrared, we film at night vision, and uh, but we're actually in all reality sitting in pitch black. Which, if any of you have ever seen one of these shows, first of all, uh, very dangerous walking through the dark. Mm -hmm. um, second, second of all, walking through the dark and interviewing someone that you cannot see, mm -hmm. sense, or otherwise hear most of the time. However, it could be possible that they could see and hear or sense you. Oh yeah. Um, every time you guys do this, and uh, one of the things that has always gotten to me, what do you think that the possibilities of what you are interviewing is actually demonic, benevolent? Uh, well, I have not come across anything demonic yet, as of yet. Um, I've got some evidence that they kind of portrayed themselves as being demonic. Um, it may, it could have been the early stages of a demonic, demonic haunting in this home, but um, they never followed through with it. We lost talk, touch with the client, and uh, but yeah, I mean you never know. It, it's potluck. You, you you know the you know some most places they don't look haunted. They most likely are, and then it's places that. Um, that look brand new, like a brand new building, and you go in there and you come out with all kinds of evidence. So you never know until you go do the investigation. That is true. We have watched a couple of uh, paranormal investigations where the gentleman had investigated a house that's only like 10 years old, mm -hmm. and some of the best footage came off of a toy being played with out of that house. I can't advertise the show. You guys know which one I'm talking about. Um, so it... it, it I guess there's not a fine line between where the ghost can and cannot go. Everybody thinks that they're going to haunt an old building or a cemetery or whatnot, and it's just not so. No, nope, not at all. And another thing, too, they can attach themselves to you, and you can bring them home. I have heard that, and I have heard a couple of our gentlemen from the Poetic Justice Paranormal Group have done so. Um, has there been any historical figures that you have investigated and yet maybe caught some evidence that was very liable um, to the fans or whatnot? Uh, not really. Uh, most of the stuff that we do is uh, kind of residential homes. We, um, you know, if you got activity in your home, the best thing to do is bring, bring in a paranormal group that's experienced and diagnose, you know, see who you got in your house. Because a lot of times it's just a, it's a relative or it's somebody that lived in the house just trying to tap you on the shoulder and say, hey, I'm here. And uh, we come, we figure out, you know, try, try and figure that out. I and mean, if they communicate with us, if they work with our equipment, then we come out of the show with, uh, you know, we come out with evidence and help, help you gain understanding of who's in your house. Now, when you do these uh, investigations, do you cleanse them at all, or are you one no. of the paranormal units that leave that up to someone else to care, clear it out? Do you hook them up with someone? Yeah, to clear we, it out? we do have people. We've got demonologists. We've got, um, you know, cleansers. Uh, we just go in and we diagnose the situation, and you know, we're not like most. We're not really ghost hunters. We go in, we're paranormal researchers, so the evidence that we get from these investigations, we tear it apart, break it down into their elements, and you know, we, we, we try to design our equipment based on the evidence that we gather, and, um, and you know, it doesn't just sit on a shelf. Now back to the part of, um, you can take them home with you. Mm -hmm. What can you do as a precaution, if any, to 
keep them from coming home with you? Well, I talked about this with Carl Johnson on my show, and um, it's it's all a matter of faith. I mean, I can have faith in this microphone, and it's going to protect me. It's it's all a matter of what you want to do. There's 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 um, you know, if you feel comfortable saying a prayer, you say a prayer before you go in. A lot of people imagine a white light over them and it encases them and protects them. And it's it's all a matter of what you believe. I believe anyway. And it's it's a true fact that even all the believing that you want, it's still the possibility mm -hmm. that this thing is going to still follow you home. Exactly, and it's not even a matter of being on an investigation having this happen. I mean, it could happen to anybody. And that's what happens, people get this stuff, acti you know, activity uh, rises up in their house and they don't understand what's going on and, or why, and they could have brought something home from anywhere, from somebody else's house or whatever. So to this date, Big River is probably, you would say, was the best uh, evidence that you have oh, yeah. caught. Yep. Uh, so I would definitely put that on your, as most spookiest places, or? Yeah, definitely, without a doubt, hands down. Three, three, three years we did it in a row, and we came out every time with, incredible evidence. I have never thought in my life I've been by that place a thousand and one times that there would be anything in there because it's always a very peaceful uh, atmosphere. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times when you do investigations like other groups do, uh, uh, the some of the best stuff they get out of is actually hostile areas like Gettysburg or uh, other areas there where there's been tons of violent and distressful situations. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't think Big River being that it's um, very quiet and tranquil back there, but I guess... Uh, it's got quite the history. It used to be a brothel. Um, it used to be the center of town, like, you know, how they have Carnegie Hall home days. Um, it used to be that, that's where they used to hold that. So it's got, a, it's got a good history to it. So a lot of memories embedded in this area that may have been 100 years ago. Yep. And of course, things have faded away where he's, that part of West Greenwich is no longer the center. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, kind of like downtown Coventry. Yeah, with its time. Yep. It's pictures of uh, Model A's out in front of it. That, that is definitely interesting. We're going to get back to a little more on this. We're going to go down to a commercial break, and then we'll have a couple guests ask some questions of you and whatnot. If you I have some mind. questions. Right after commercial break there, dorky. <laughs> now.